Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Teague Moore knows what's going on. And if you're uh, at a loss right now and you're a parent who's just trying to get a kid in any level, NAIA, JUCO, NCAA Division One, Two, II, or Three, Teague Moore, the wrestling consultant, he's the go-to right now, former head coach at American and Clarion University. He's coached at Harvard, Oklahoma State. The guy's better on the block. He knows what's going on. He's a man, right? Biggest uh, biggest investment, biggest decision in your, in your, your child's life, so – you know, get some answers, get them before it's too late. Right. Coach Ludwig, welcome to the barbarian hour. Coach Ludwig is the head wrestling coach for the mid American conferences, Northern Illinois Huskies. Coach Ludwig, are you in year 11 in DeKalb, Illinois? Yes, sir. Yep. Good to be here, Zeb. I appreciate you having me on, bud. Absolutely coach. Uh, so wait a minute. First things first, big news. You just got a contract extension for all your hard work. Uh, you guys are doing the job in every aspect when it comes to every way, shape, and form. Northern Illinois is getting the job done. You had the guy who won the Elite 90, right? Kaufman? Yep, Mason Kaufman. You got a guy who won the Elite 90. You had your first All-American. Congratulations on that and Britt Wilson. And he's a two-time MAC champ, right? That's correct, yes. And then Olenek, am I fit? I'm saying the name right, aren't I? Olenek. Olenek. Olenek, a California guy, a Bakersfield mm-hmm. guy, right? That's right. He was the Mac freshman of the year like three years ago, wasn't he? Uh, that would have been two years ago. Two years ago. So you get all these guys back an extra year, right? Yes. Oh, man. You guys are rolling. In every pre- preview we've done, guess whose name comes up because there's going to be a new Mac champ this year, no matter what. There's going to be a new Mac team champ this year, but whose name comes up in every preview? But Northern Illinois, you guys – you got a squad coach. You got a really good team, and you're getting the job done. And obviously, your administration sees that too. And congratulations on the extension. But when we get into this, how many years total have you been in DeKalb, Illinois, at Northern Illinois? Uh, 16 all told. So I was a, an assistant under Dave Grant, um, who was a fantastic guy and a great mentor for about six years. Um, so I met him while I was doing some grad work and wrapping that up in Minnesota. And happened to bump into him at the Minnesota State High School State Tournament. And he was recruiting. I was doing the same. And uh, at the time, he had an ad up on a website looking for an assistant coach. So I kind of flagged him down. I saw him coming up the stairs and uh, started talking to him a little bit about what he was looking for. And next thing I knew, in a, you know, in a week or two, I was on the road out to visit him. And then uh, we hit it off and, and had a lot of same similar ideas, similar philosophies. And um, I've been in DeKalb ever since, Zeb. That's, that's awesome. Where were you actually in Minnesota? Where were you at? Uh, MSU Mankato. So you were in Mankato. Is Mankato the one right across the border from Fargo? No, that's Moorhead. So Moorhead. How far is Mankato from Moorhead then? That is quite a ways. So it's, uh, geez, probably, I mean, what, it's my Minnesota geography is probably a little rusty, but four or five hours, something like is that. Is it north? Is it way north then? Moorhead's way north, yes. Way north, okay. So, so we're like, uh, or Mankato was like an hour from the cities. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I gotcha. So not, yeah, because I get those two confused. Um, and where's St. Cloud? St. Cloud, again, you know, probably about yeah, an hour and a half away from that, from Mankato. Okay. As well, so they yeah, St. Cloud's been doing too. a nice job, but Mankato was a great experience, you know, coached with Jim Mikovsky, who was, was another great guy for two years and um, we did some nice things there and going from, geez, we, we took it to, we got third, third at NC two A's, um, my, my second year of that grad assistantship. So that was a good time. Did you leave Finley and go right to Mankato? No, I didn't. I had a little bit of a winding path. Um, so after Finley, I, uh, I, 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 I kind of kicked it around for about a year, um, lived in Columbus actually. And then, um, took the LSAT, got into law school and went, went to Detroit College of Law on the campus of Michigan State. And from there, um, was there for a semester, but the whole time was kind of fiddling around in the mat room with some MMA guys, this and that, and just kind of realized that, uh, you know, still had this wrestling thing in my blood and um, 
had a conversation with my folks that I wanted to go back into wrestling. So I went back to Finley for a year, coached there for a year, went to Mankato two years for two years after that. And then, then I've been at NIU since then. So, um, you know, kind of an unconventional path into a coaching career, but I mean, I think just what ultimately led me here was just, just the hunger and the thirst to keep chasing this thing down and, and to do what I love full time. As far as head coaches in D1 go, it's Barber, you, and I want to say Manning are the only D2, D3, or NAI guys. Am I correct as head coaches? Is that correct? Uh, I'm not keeping track, but that sounds about right. So, you know, I, I, here's the thing. I don't know if people get, like, people are so into this. Like, people are just, like, obsessed with D1 wrestling. You know that, man. Mm-hmm. You, you're on the recruiting show. You know all about this. You know, what was it, D1? You know, because people don't know Northern Illinois. They don't know Kent State. They don't know. They think Ohio U's Ohio State. You know what I mean? They just, they don't know. They don't know anything about Buffalo. They just don't know. If it's not in the Big Ten or the Big 12, a lot of them don't know anything about it, right? Do you fight that battle a lot when people like literally don't know where you guys are? Uh, I mean, not as often as you think, maybe to a, a lay person, but to a true wrestling people, you know, I mean, it's, a, it's such a small world and a niche market that, you know, most of them know for the most part, you know, what the D1 programs are. Heck, I mean, what is there under 80 total? So yeah, um, it's not too, too tough to keep track or at least, uh, you know, they've been to a camp somewhere down the line, but yeah, I know what you're saying. You know, it's always the fight with the uh, kind of the smaller directional schools versus the uh, flagship schools in the state. But um, those are fun battles. Those are things that we, uh, you know, obviously understand in the positions that you're in and the schools that you're at. And um, those are those are the kind of fights that, you know, you look forward to, man. Why, why not us? Why not now? You know, every day, every year. So um, if you're kind of constantly have that mindset of, of, boy, do people even know who we are, then you know, maybe you, you might want to start getting your name out there a little bit more. But I think for the most part, this small wrestling niche market, they have a pretty good handle on, on what's going on in the wrestling world. Um, so I wouldn't say that, but I would say that we probably have to work twice as hard um, to get the attention of the, of the top flight people out there. So out of high school, first off, you're from Chelsea, Michigan. Yeah. And my mother-in-law was a teacher. I don't know if my mother-in-law ever taught you. What, what is it? Was Sarah your mother-in-law? No, uh, Sarah's my wife, Sandy Kaczynski. Sandy. She would have been Sandy Kaczynski then. I don't yeah, know if she, Sandy well, would have been your teacher. She was, uh, and she taught at Chelsea at Beach Middle School, correct? Yes, and that was my sixth grade homeroom teacher, yes. So you did have Miss Kaczynski. hmm Oh, man. My mother-in-law's a freaking angel, dude. <laughs> She's God, like the you. best. She's an awesome you. lady. And we were actually talking about, there was a, when you were in high school, there was a school shooting at Chelsea, but it wasn't like any school shooting that people think of. Your school shooting was, go ahead, tell the story. What happened? What is the story? What happened at Chelsea High School when you were in Yeah, high school? well, you know, um, really a sad story. Um, matter of fact, I had the guy for chemistry class that particular day. The guy's name was Mr. Leaf, and uh, he had a wife that taught at the school as well, but, um, I, you know, I don't know what had happened, um, but had some meeting with the staff and apparently, you know, brought a firearm to that particular meeting and opened fire on the superintendent, assistant principal, principal, um, those folks um, fatally wounding one and wounding the other. And, you know, we didn't even know what was going on. I was telling you the story earlier. Uh, my buddies and I had, had been you know, hanging around at the school, we kind of had a little bit of time after school before the bus left for a wrestling match that day. So we came back and, and the school was kind of like in the process of getting locked down. So we're wandering through the gym trying to get to our lockers and we got promptly escorted out of the building by, by a, you know, what I could only explain as SWAT team members in my memory right now. And that was, a, that was a very strange thing. I mean, it was hard to absorb what exactly was going on at the moment until you heard the story afterwards as to what actually went down. So very strange, surreal, and uh, sad day in Chelsea High School history, no doubt. Were they pointing guns at you? No, 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 no. We, we, were, we weren't a threat. I mean, they, I think they knew that, hey, we're going to have kids showing up for some sporting events. You know, we didn't know any better. There was no way to get a hold of us. It wasn't like you could text us or anything. We weren't carrying cell phones. Um, that was before that time. So we just showed up and then, you know, kind of bumped into these folks clearing buildings. Cause I think he was still on the move wow. throughout our high school campus and just got us out of there. So yeah, we didn't even know what was going on to be honest. And then, then later we found out. So 
Ryan, when you, in hindsight, when you think about something like that, like, do you get sick to your stomach when you think about it? Cause like, and I think like, I almost, I almost like, like one day I almost thought I lost my kid in the river. Right. When he was like a year old, I get sick to my stomach thinking yeah. about it. Right. Like it just makes me sick. It didn't happen. It wasn't even close, but like things like that make me sick. Do you, when you look back on it and you reflect on it, you're like, Oh my God, we could have been waiting outside. We could, cause you're that school set up real weird. Isn't it? Isn't it set up like a, like a California type school? Yeah, they've, they've got a very nice high school now. You know how they always build the good stuff once you leave, right? But uh, oh, yeah. yeah, back in the day, the joke was, you know, the leaky hallways of Chelsea High School because, yes, it was college-style campus, California-style, they called it. So several buildings with these, you know, ugly, colorful, bubble-topped outdoor hallways that leaked rain and snow and everything else as you walked through them. So, yeah, you had to go outside, which I didn't mind. I mean, fresh air was okay, but kind of different than a normal high school today. Um, and yeah, you know, we could have been wandering around and, you know, Lord knows what could have happened if we encountered the wrong person. But uh, yeah, it does, man. It's just, it's, it's scary. It scares you when you think about it. And um, it's very surreal to think about that was happening in your own backyard at the time and how close you were to it. I think my mother-in-law said you guys went to school the next day. And yeah, I think, I think you said that you jogged our memory. Probably did. Yeah, you wouldn't see something like that nowadays either. No you know? way, man. I mean, you know, the, the amount of grief counseling and how that, sh that shakes a community, man. Wow, that is that is wild to think about it. Because I was, you know, and I, I just like put it together, like right when we started talking, I was like, no, wait, yeah, you're from Chelsea. My mother-in-law taught there. And then we've talked about this before. And I was just like, oh, my God. It just, you know, you know what I mean? It just like, I, yeah, it blows my mind. I think the guy that your your teacher who the perpetrator right i think he went home and like waited for the police to he was like kicked back in this lazy boy and watched tv till they came and arrested him yeah yeah i mean he was a you know bizarre unique bird, unique bird man i mean you know was, the classes was different like there was you know a lot of music going on which was cool when you're in high school you thought that yeah. was fine but uh definitely thinking back like there were some cues that this guy was you know maybe just a, a bit off plum you know yeah, man. And then that happens, but okay. So Chelsea, you're at Chelsea. Okay. So I got to ask the question. I asked my wife this all the time. I asked Ray Yvonne Foley this. I have to ask everybody who is from that area. Why not the university of Michigan? And I understand Chelsea is about an hour from East Lansing and about 20 minutes from Ann Arbor. Correct. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So you're, you're in between the two, but you're, you're obviously, you know, cause my mother-in-law, raised my wife and her sister in Ann Arbor and cooked mm -hmm. her out every day. Why not the university of Michigan? I've asked Rayvon Foley. I've asked, I asked my wife constantly still, why not university of Michigan? Well, I mean, I, I ended up going where I felt, I felt, you know, I guess, uh, pursued and wanted, you know, um, and to be honest, I mean, I, I I didn't have a name coming out of high school. I won a state championship my senior year and never qualified before that. You know, I, uh, my growth was exponential. I started wrestling in eighth grade. So, you know, it was eighth grade was just brawling my way through matches. And then I, I had a, a terrific coach. My head coach was Kerry Cargill, who was, who was a really a great wrestler in his own right. But the assistant coach named Mike Young, who, who a lot of people in Michigan would know, um, he was really involved in the schoolboy teams, all the Fargo teams, all those kind of things. But Learned a lot from him, really kind of learned a lot on how to grow, how to get better, how to get tough. Um, and then just grew exponentially ninth grade through through my senior year and ended up putting it all together for a senior year state championship campaign. And, you know, I mean, I, th th those guys just, you know, I think maybe I got a call or two from some assistant, but uh, never, never anything from Barr. And, um, you know, I think it was just just. Jeff Fire was the coach at Finley. He was, you know, kind of getting the word out. Somebody had told him about me and he came calling. He was a great guy. I went down there. They were coming off an NAIA national title. Um, and, you know, I, I guess I just, I thought that was a great place to grow and learn. And they wanted me bad and um, came after me and made me feel like it was, you know, I was going to be a big cog in that part of the system down there. And, you know, I went for it and I had a fantastic experience and I'm an extremely proud uh, Finley Roughneck alum. Okay. So Jeff Fire was a savage. Yes, he was. Jeff Fire was an absolute savage. He got Moran. Yep, he had Moran. He's got, I mean, all kinds of legends down there. Lucy, Ron Lucy. I don't know. Do you remember Alberto Rodriguez? Yeah, I remember all these guys. From I'm Cuba. from Northwest Ohio. He defected Ohio. over. Yeah, so, yeah I'm, from, I mean, I'm from 45 minutes away, so I know all yeah. those guys. Uh, Bill Scherf, Spanky, as some might might know him. Yeah. No Carver guy. Um, 
Bubba Taylor from Clyde. Yeah, Bubba. Bubba's still a coach there. Yeah, he is. He was a oh. Bubba is a monster, man. That guy I is love so Bubba. tough. Bubba's yeah. a good dude. Hey, if, if you ever get a chance and Clyde has a good good they have good guys. Clyde was really good when we were in high school and it kind of started with Bubba and Ray Long and they 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 had this really good culture and they were mean. It's a blue collar town. The kids are just tougher than nails. And Bellevue and Clyde are like uh, probably two miles apart and they're rivals. If you can ever recruit out of those two towns in Northwest Ohio, Clyde and Bellevue, man, they've just got both have really just tough blue collar traditions, man. And, and that's where Bubba's from. Bubba's a Clyde guy. He's a Clyde flyer. And mm -hmm. uh, I took a lot of beatings from a dude named Chad Long from uh, Clyde and, and he beat my brother Tate too. He, he's a really good guy, but, they, they beat us in the state football playoffs. Clyde was always just really blue collar, hard nosed. That's where Whirlpool, that's where they make a lot of the Whirlpool washer, dryers, uh, and dishwashers. So that, that's kind of like what makes it so blue collar and tough, man. Clyde is yeah. just, and that's where Bubba is. Bubba's their guy. He's one of their first state champs, really good guy. And Bubba Taylor's a great guy. Was Sean Nelson there yet? No, not, not when I first got there. Now, Sean arrived as a, uh, as a grad assistant or an assistant. I can't remember exactly. I think it was a grad assistant my sophomore year, my, my second year in school. So I never registered or anything. I just did a straight four. Um, and Sean, I believe, arrived then. And then it was a very quick transition for him because Sean was pretty young, too. Uh, but we, we all hit it off with Sean right away. You know, he's a great guy, very charismatic guy. And he was, you know, re still wrestling super tough. And uh, I believe he took over the year after that. I think Jeff Fire's, you know, um, wife at the time got some large promotion um, for with her company, and then they moved up to moved up to Michigan. And then he ended up doing some things at Eastern Michigan. But then that's when Sean took us over, and um, yeah, he's been there ever since. So we were just joking about that the other day, me and Sean, how long he's been there. And uh, I mean, he's almost, he's almost fifty. So twenty five years. He's been there yeah. twenty five years, hasn't he? It's crazy. Really good guy, man. Really yeah, good awesome. guy. And he does it all with like one or two scholarships, he told me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it almost you know, exploded. I was like, what? I mean, it was nice, you know, back when Finley was NAI because I mean, it was a, it was a, I mean, man, we had some dudes in there, I thought, you know, and uh, we, we would wrestle a lot of the Mac schools, you know, that was a lot of fun for us. And, uh, you know, but back, back then, you had a lot more dollars in that division. And now, yes, he's been he's been a bit hamstrung in terms of the scholarship allotments, but still doing some great things with some really good individuals down there. So, yeah, we're proud of what they're doing. Yeah, I think one of the Weimers, I want to say it was one of the Weimers. Yes, yep. He won it from Central Crossing. He won the NCAAs. I actually got to call. Coached by, by, coached by a Finley alum, Jamie Ramirez. Yeah, Jamie Ramirez, Central Crossing. I believe it's Central Crossing. I got that right, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's Central Crossing. Uh, so, anyhow – yeah, Jamie Ramirez is from Fremont. Yep, <laughs> Fremont's yep. next to Oak Harbor, where I'm from. So uh, what's wild about it, Ryan, is uh, th those guys, like Finley, you know, like I'm saying, I'm from Northwest Ohio. So I remember, you know, one of our guys was an NAIL American, an Oak Harbor guy, you know, Bill Scherf, really good guy. Uh, he was an assistant coach at Oak Harbor. But they just, they're always scrappy. He always finds a way to get a guy in the NCAA finals year yeah. in and year out. Sean Nelson does a fabulous job. And I got to call Ben Sargent's NCAA final match in 2014. That was awesome. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it was just like real, just an awesome, uh, just really cool to be able to call that. And he's a barrel roll guy. He's yeah. Like, he wants you to front head lock and he dumps you. And that's what he did. And I've been watching him since he's a little kid. You know, he was one of David Taylor's only high school losses. Is that right? Yeah. Ben Sargent was the real deal. Fun fact. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just wild to think in in the whole wrestling community, and his sister is uh his sister is uh, either married to or engaged to Cam Tassari. Really? Sister. Yeah, oh. it's a it's a small world though over in uh, Northwest and Western Ohio, man. You the know, bloodline that. right there. Oh yeah, yeah, the, and he has a son too. The, Tassari has a son with with a uh, sergeant's sister, so pretty pretty amazing stuff. But Finley, great place, excellent place. Mm -hmm. scrappy yeah. place blue collar they're the roughnecks dudes who drill oil right yeah 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 we had a great time man great group of hard-working guys that uh you know really were hungry and man we we got after it in that room and uh we still we still have a pretty close group today so uh made a great choice and have some lifelong friends and relationships from that place 
Did you ever catch any of the Moran smoke? Did he ever get to you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got my hands on Moran a couple times. Took a couple rides from that guy. Yeah, man, he's uh, that's that's an amazing cat right there, no doubt. Just a total mutant, man. And really they is. brought him. They brought him to do a clinic at Oak Harbor, and he didn't speak English. Yeah, <laughs> he threw my brother all. He was hitting. He's crazy. He was throwing him by his arm. He does a lot of stuff where he would grab you by your triceps and your lats, and it was it was wild what he was doing. And it was systematic what he did. I, if you watch the show, we had him on the Barbarian Hour. Did you see it? Did you really? No, I didn't oh, see it. Oh, I got to send you the I link. You're going to love it. I never did see that one. Okay. It was a two T-shirt interview. <laughs> <laughs> He's nuts. He's nuts. I love it. But uh, so, you know, Finley, did you ever see yourself when you're at Finley and NAIA school at that time, then they transitioned to D2, NCAA D2. Did you ever think like, yeah, I'm going to be a D1 head coach? Was I ever thought in your mind when you're at the University of Finley? No, I thought I was going to be, uh, you know, first I thought I was going to be a hazmat guy, okay, because that's what Finley was known that's for. That's their right big one, the isn't day. it? Yeah, that's their that's, big major. I thought, hey, yeah, that's great. And then I took a chemistry class, and I realized that's not the way I'm going. Um, and then after that, I thought I was going to be getting a criminal justice. So I, I had a criminal justice major, and then I really fell in love with psychology throughout, throughout school, too. So I double majored in criminal justice and psychology. Um, dabbled with the idea of becoming, you know, chasing a doctorate in, in psychology and, and maybe counseling in that aspect, but ended up in law school and ultimately wrestling where um, I think kind of counseling does come into play in, in most regards, but uh, kind of offers a better vehicle for personal relationships also. So you go to Mankato, what uh, grad degree did you get at Mankato? Um, I was studying sport management out there. So that's the, that's the popular one, you know, with all the kind of the sport, kind of the assistant coaches, grad assistants. Are you on track? I mean, you could go get a doctor degree. Is that a fringe? I ask everybody this. Matt Hill says that Edinburgh does fringe. Like your kids will get, you'll get, your kids will get tuition at Edinburgh. Andresi gets fringe. I think Joel Greenlee gets fringe. Buffalo does not get fringe, I think, is what uh, Stutzman said. Do you guys get fringe? Do you get school for free and then your, your kids and your wife? You know, honestly, I, I, I've had started to kind of fish around with that. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm not thinking of that right now yet. I mean, my kids are, my oldest is eight. So we've, we've got some, we're just trying to learn how to, you know, read sentences properly and write them properly at the moment. And then I'll think about a college education at some point. <laughs> but yeah, down the line, man, if, if, you know, I'm still here at that point and uh, that, that's a possibility, then yes, that will definitely be entertained. But you, you get, you get fringe. Do you yeah. Get, oh yeah. 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 No doubt about so it. You could go get your doctorate degree. Yes, sir. I mean, you're a bit of a maniac like that. And obviously an intelligent person, if you got into law school and you already have a grad degree, I mean, that's something that I, if I, I was I, intelligent, I would have stayed in law school and been practicing law right now, but I mean, <laughs> okay. But instead you're getting contract extensions. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. Yeah. Who's, uh, who, who's, you got the elite 90 guy. Come on. You that's got the right. smartest guy that's in right. college yeah. wrestling. Yeah, I'm just trying to be like Mason Kaufman. I mean, this guy's the smartest guy at the NCAA tournament. I think ultimately speaking of doctorates, that guy's on a path of being a doctor and that's, that's what he's going to do. How do you get a Mason Kaufman? How do you get a guy like that? Who's he's the most elite student athlete yeah. as far as the academics at the NCAA tournament. He's the guy. How do you recruit guys like that? And, and, you know, a lot of these guys are, they go to the Ivies, they go to the academies, so, you know, you got to have good grades. That guy's that type of guy, right? Yeah, no doubt. I mean, we were the fortunate recipients of a very unfortunate situation that went down at Eastern Michigan, because that's where Mason was at his freshman year. So, you know, they dropped and, you know, those kids got to find a home. Um, so, you know, Mason was very attractive. We, we had heard nothing but, the, but good things about his work ethic and obviously his academic profile. So, you know, reached out, started the process on that. And uh, we all started a, or got a great relationship fostered there and came down, took a look, hit it off. And, um, you know, he's been with us ever since. And he's just, you know, this is a guy who is, uh, he's, he's got a, he's got a perfectionist in him. You know, he, he does not uh, accept anything less than the best from himself. Um, so that's really, a, he, you know, to graduate with a 4.0 in undergrad. And, um, you know, he was, we were talking about, talking about what he's going to do, you know, to get into his doctorate program. And he's like, Hey, if I get in, he said one time, you know, I'm like, Mason, like there's nothing else you could possibly do. Like you, you will get in, you know, your extracurriculars are off the wall, off the charts. Your GPA is perfect. You know, you're an incredible citizen. So, I mean, I, you know, 
but this is what this is how he thinks. So I think he's got that that hunger, that drive, that uh, almost like a fear, you know, that, that drives him to be perfect in everything that he does. So that, that's the kind of guy you're dealing with there. Is Mason a Michigan kid? No, he's a Wisconsin kid. Stratford, Wisconsin. Jeez, oh, Pete. Never lost in high school. Kaufman never lost in high school? No, no, he had, no, he had some pro- health problems where he had to, like, you know, kind of take some time off and that kind of stuff. I think he got real sick one year, but no, he never, he didn't have any losses in high school, which is pretty amazing. How many Eastern Michigan guys do you have? You got Springer's a coach. Springer, yes. Springer's one of your coaches. And yeah. then Kaufman, is there any other Eastern Michigan guys? Springer and Mason, that was the only guys. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, what, you know, a couple other guys spread out to some other Mac schools, but Mason's the guy we ended up with and we were really pleased with that. Yeah, McNulty was at Kent State. Now he's at Wisconsin. He's an Eastern yeah. Michigan guy. He, I think he qualified for Eastern. Yeah, yeah, he did, man. He's crazy. Stud. And that, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy to think about that that program. Yeah, Dave, Dave, Dave had it rolling, you know? And yeah. then they just they pulled it right off from underneath them. That was, that was pretty dirty times right there. Real dirty times. And that was Cleveland. That was post-Cleveland, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, that was uh, when, you know, what was the kid's name? The 41-pounder just Darian came out. Perry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was, you know, put really put it together, man. And, really uh, put it then, together. Then, had a great I mean, geez, tournament. And man, Cleveland was so much fun. That tournament was a blast. But yeah. then, but then, yeah, EMU, you know, coming off their best finish in in quite so long, then and to have that come come home and have that happen to him, that was a sad, sad time, man. You know, especially all the hard work we knew they were putting in over there. Yeah, and and Dave. Fortunately, is able to go over to you know in Ann Arbor, which yeah, I, you know the setup there. Ann Arbor and Ipsy, they they touch. Yep, they touch. You wouldn't know the difference unless there was a sign telling you that. Um, I think Eisenhower is the one where it goes right from right from the. I think, yeah, Eisenhower's the campus is off Eisenhower. Right, Michigan's campus is off Eisenhower. If I'm if I'm saying if I'm recalling that correctly, you go under twenty three. Yeah, it's not. The, the campuses are what four miles apart probably yeah i mean they're, they're right next to each other no doubt yeah that's so crazy it blows my mind to think about it and it's just real hard there to get what they had going what dave boyard had going at eastern michigan and them for them to just pull the rug out from underneath them because it's so hard that you're in the shadow of ann arbor and the university of michigan and then you start getting recruits and you get athletes and you got a good thing going and then they, they drop it yeah, yeah, it's, that's it's correct. I mean, it can be, it can be done. You know, even though Eastern Michigan stands in the shadow of U of M, I mean, if you're doing the right things, recruiting the right kind of kids, and then you know, obviously training them right, um, showing them how to live right, getting the right kids that go to class every day. I mean, you know, you, you can get a wrestling program rolling. So um, there's no doubt, you know, that that's that that's the case anywhere. You know, in a movie. I mean, as evidenced with the parody popping up all around, all around the country and all these programs. I love it, man. I'm I'm a huge parody guy. I love it. I love it when, I love it when the uh, good, you know, the the so conference. I love what Campbell's done. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. they've done a phenomenal job. Obviously, you know, I'm a big App State fan. Ian Miller's there. My other nephew Wyatt's there. I'm I'm obviously super excited for what they're doing. But the Southern Conference does a great job. Chattanooga does a great job. So you know, I'm a MAC guy. I'm a, I'm a SoCon guy. I'm a Pac-12 guy. I, I like what those conferences are doing because I'm, I'm from the Mac. I wrestled in the Mac. I enjoy Mac wrestling. I, I like it. I, you know, I'm alum from Kent state. So I want to see the mid majors do well. You know, what is your closest duel Northwestern? How far is Champaign? How far is Northwestern? How far is Madison from DeKalb, Illinois? Yeah, I would say Northwestern. We're, we're, we were finally able to get them back on the schedule this year. They're like an hour down the road. So that's nice. Um, we'll be going to their place this year. And then we're going to get the home and home going. They're going to come out to us next year. Uh, Wisconsin's probably a little over two, two hours, maybe two and a half hours away, which isn't far. And then uh, Champaign's about three. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we don't have to go too far, buddy, to find some of the best wrestling in the country. There's no doubt about that. So we are in the heartland. Now, we are a little bit of an outlier in the MAC in terms of being west. So, you know, we, we do got to get our travel on a little bit to reach all those schools over there, but we don't mind it. That's wrestling rich heading east anyway. So uh, we typically just double up. Like if we go Kent State, we'll try to pick up Cleveland State. Um, haven't yet ventured out to, you know, like Clarion, Bloom, Edinburgh country, uh, Lock Haven country. But uh, hopefully if we can get some swaps going where they come out and visit us and we'll, we'll get out there and return. What does that travel even look like? You got to ride a bus. You're not you're not flying to Pittsburgh and then driving to those Clarion, Bloom, Lock Haven, and Edinburgh. 
you're driving, aren't you? Yeah. Well, we're not, like I said, yes. If, if we could line a couple up, then yes, we're going to fly. Um, we, we, you know, <laughs> the, the bus trip that, you know, the longest bus trip we'll make is the one to Athens, you know, and that's just, <laughs> that's just, well, how long is there's, that? Like, there's one way in and one way out of there, man. Oh, and there's no getting around it. Route 33. You know? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> So that one, you know, I mean, I'm sure Joel shares the same sentiments. Um, they're, they're long drives to DeKalb, to Athens, but uh, that's what, again, that's what kind of makes that, that one special. Um, and a lot of times we'll make a weekend out of that too, hit something up in Ohio and then go down there. But yeah, those are long drives. And then, you know, we'll fly to Buffalo, fly to Ryder, um, head down to Little Rock this year. We'll fly down there, wrestle them in Cal Poly. So that'll be a, some, some good non-regional competition for us as well. How far is SIU from you? S-I-U-E. S-I-U-E. Right? S-I-U-E is about eh, four, four hours. Okay. So that's four. That's way, but that is on like the uh, St. Louis. That's almost. Yeah, they're right there, man. It's like the border of, uh, border of Illinois. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're way down there. Yep. Wow. And they're a MAC team. Oh yeah. Yep. No doubt. So that's kind of nice, you know, having a, an in-state kind of north-south thing too we kind of like that we, we're, we're trying to kind of work on branding that a little bit i like that i like that when you guys start getting something going uh greenly hit me up like geez seven eight years ago nine years ago i think and i did that grudge match trophy yeah 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 i had yeah. Uh, our shop teacher at my high school where i teach he made that thing and he was a he wrestled at kent state yeah i can't tell you how many conversations i had with uh you know Actually, my then assistant, Ty Prasma, who went, then went to SIUE to coach because he's from Granite City, which is right next to Edwardsville, um, about what we could call that duel, you know, um, something, you know, we, we had so many little alliteration, you know, titles for the, the Southern Illinois, Edwardsville and Northern Illinois match, but uh, never did settle on one and brand it. But I, I got to get back to that, revisit it and run it by state, see if we can get it cooking. Hey, man, they, they took it. OU, Ohio U and Kent State both took it and ran with it, man. I know they did. Yeah, that was kind they, of fun, They really man. do a good job with it. It's awesome. And I try and cover it every year if I can. And um, <laughs> it, the best was Joel hadn't beat uh, Andresi in like six or seven years. And then on a year when he knew he was going to beat him is when he had me make the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's How greenly I mean, of him, right? Hey, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's all right. It. That's a good oh, game. Andresi was so mad, dude. He was so <laughs> mad. Why would you make that trophy? And then, and then, and then that uh, it ended up in the on the mantle of a bunch of my rental, a couple of my rental properties for a year <laughs> each. So it was fun. You know, what I mean, that's fun. I like that. I enjoy that, and it's good marketing. And I think we brought it in with uh, Nick Namath, Dolph Ziggler, WWE guy. The yeah. first, yeah, I think that that actually was like we did that. Great. He was at one of them, and he man, that guy draws. That guy draws some like awesome crossover people who came to the match thinking that there was going to be a ring and ropes. Oh my God. Yeah. He drew like 1500, 2000 people. I'm not even really. Kidding. Yeah. That's unreal. Yeah. When we can get him for those, um, he's awesome. And you know, he's a guy he donates his time and money because he doesn't go places for free. A lot of those, they're not just going out of the kindness of their heart. You know what I mean? Sure. And I don't blame them. Hey, there there's value in what those guys are doing. He, he had a lot of value that night and, it was a great duel, and I believe Kent State won, but they had Badley on and Kilgore, and, they, you know, they had some killers. Yeah, they were rolling right there, man. That, yeah, they, they were rolling. Right there. Yeah. But speaking of rolling, the Huskies are rolling right now, man. And doing all right. You know, I mean, we've got some great leaders. I mean, you know, this, this Britt Wilson guy is, uh, has been just a phenomenal, you know, captain leader, uh, quote, unquote, kind of quarterback of the team, you know, and uh, just, just – he just does things right, man. He's the most likable guy, you know, uh, humble, hardworking, um, picking everybody up, but pushing them at the same time kind of guy and getting out there and sets a pace in a wrestling match that, you know, everybody just aspires to wrestle to, you know. So um, sometimes when you can have a breakthrough athlete like that, that just does everything the right way in terms of his training and then it comes to fruition on the mat, boy, that really helps the rest of the guys and helps see the way um, and really just kind of, you know, starts a fire that everybody starts kind of believing and knowing that they can do that too. That man has the most impressive lion's mane, Kentucky waterfall, Tennessee necktie I think I've ever seen. Just roll with this right now. Do not tell me if he cut it. I don't want to know. I just want to believe he still has that just 
beautiful. That that's Brit. That Brit, isn't it? He's got the that, beautiful. That is Brit. Yes, and I, oh, and I will, is it still I will there? tell you that that is that is a natural, you know, natural, just flowing state. That's oh. that's supposed to be on his head. There's no yes. doubt about it. It fits. It Mojo. Fits. <laughs> Mo- <laughs> that man is living. If if he, it, first off, you can tell me the truth. Is it still there? It's there. It's oh, in all man. its glory. It listen. I looked at the biopic and I was like, "Oh, it's even more glorious than I remember seeing it." Yeah, it I think I think incredible. he even threw in kind of a nice little thin stash oh, you know, for, for some for some picks gracious. this year. So yeah, I mean, he you know he's he knows how to do it. I think he feels good. You know, it's it offers a little bit of you know a little bit of flair on the way into that single. So, um, <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, man, he just you know, I mean, he's he's humble. He has fun with it. I think uh, you know this guy. He just. <laughs> The consummate teammate too, Zeb. I mean, like this guy, you know, he's the outstanding wrestler of the MAC championship, but but uh, you'd never know it, you know, uh, from the way he puts his head down and works in that room every day and helps everybody up. So, um, two time MAC that, champ. Huh? He's, a two-time, he's a two time MAC champ. Right? Two time MAC champ. That's correct. Oh, man, that guy's really good. That guy's like really good. Like, I, yeah, when I watch that guy, I'm like, he's a hammer. He yeah. is an absolute hammer. He's your first All American for, for you as the head coach, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it was a long time coming for us. So, you know, that 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 round of 12, that blood round, that's a heartbreaking situation. You know, it's either elation or heartbreak. You know, we, we stood on that, uh, you know, stood on the precipice of that breakthrough for, geez, what, 15 years, you know, and at least my 15. I think it was 17 before, you know, I think Ben Heiser was the last guy. He was in the finals in 04 and then, uh, you know, lost to Jones. but. Um, and then, you know, boy, after that, it was, you know, guys like Pat Castillo in the round of 12, you know, Sean Scott, um, geez, who else? Um, and those guys were multiple round of 12 guys, you know, but got time after time. Matt Mugen, you know, got beat by Heflin the one year um, before he blew up to 97. He was at 74. He was a monster. So anyway, you know, time after time, we were, we were there, excited, you know, and um, not that that isn't something to hang your hat on, because those guys did an incredible job, had fantastic careers. And like I've heard you mention a few interviews, you know, does all American, is that the end all be all of, you know, you had a successful career? Absolutely not. I mean, if you can say that you, first of all, were on an NCAA division one wrestling team and you made it for four or five years, then, then you're a success story. No doubt. Um, you graduated, you obviously made it through that training, your, your loyalty, your, your uh, commitment to your teammates. But if you can get to the championship, boom, you win a couple matches there. Outstanding. Now you're sitting there in the round of 12. That's a, a another feather in your cap. And, to bring home all American or national championship honors, man, is just, uh, you know, beyond, beyond a, a dream of what's, you know, what, what the normal wrestling guy can imagine. So, you know, that's, that's a testament to the hard, hard Britt Wilson's put his work in. And I feel like we got a couple other guys that can contend for those honors as well this year. I mean, there's no question. I, like I said, in all the previews, you know, if we don't mention you guys, I mean, we're not doing our due diligence. I mean, you've got a team, man. You've got a solid team. Um, you were the co-MAC coach of the year in 2020, right? Yes. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're doing it right, man. You're doing all the right stuff. And it's crazy to think that that us as a community, as far as wrestlers, alum, coaches, media, our big thing, oh, wait, is he an All-American? Were you an All-American? When's the last time they had an All-American? I feel like it's a really unfair, unrealistic uh, – I guess label and distinction we're putting on people and, and you know, a, a team can go 0 and 16 in duels, but if they have an all American, well, man, they got it done. They got a successful program. I think that's kind of almost like the mentality. I think there's something wrong with that in my opinion. I yeah. I mean, think- I, you know, I, I've thought about that. I, I heard you mention that, you know, when the interview with Stutzman and, and Greenlee and stuff like that. And I thought about it a little bit and, you know, I mean, Hey, that's, that's it's America, baby. You know, we're, we're fighting for these things, these spots. It's, you know, we're fighting for these, a lot of people fighting for these very small coveted honors, you know, and, and, and that's, that's okay. I like that too. You know, I mean, that makes it that much more special, but there's no doubt that it goes beyond that, you know, who, who you become in pursuit of that is far more important, you know, and that's really what we tell our guys every day. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's the class work, it's the drilling, it's the extra work, it's the, you know, Maybe you're behind the guy that's fighting for all American honors. I mean, you're just, you're, you're filling your role to the best of your extent and becoming a better person 
in pursuit of those goals. That's the ultimate goal in, in any wrestling program, or at least it should be. I think what you're saying, what you're preaching is absolutely how I feel about it. It's, it's all, it's about the journey. Doing things results-based, you're going to have tough, some tough pills to swallow, man. Like if you're, if it's what you became, I am an All-American. Well, what, what did it take for you to become an All-American, right? What was mm-hmm. your journey? Who did you pick up along the way? You know, like who, who did you help out? Were you a good teammate? Were you a good person? How did you balance school life? Time management work, weight, all these just different things, man. And I, I, I sincerely believe that like being a good, like what you say about Brit, man, that that's what means that means a lot to me, right? The great head of hair is great and all that. And the good, you know, pencil thin mustache or whatever. But the real thing is what, what type of teammate is he? What is his impact on the program? What kind of guy is he? Right. Is he yes. getting his degree? Because this is, that is the vehicle to get a degree is wrestling, right? I'd have never got a degree. I'd have gone home and done iron work if I wouldn't had wrestling. Right. I mean, that's just that simple. It's, it's, it's not – Ian Miller would have gone and done iron work if he wouldn't have wrestled. That or tree work. I can just tell you that much. I think that, yeah. that, that that's what would have happened. And, and you know, having, having the structure, you know, being a part of the program, the people you meet along the way, right? I met my wife at Kent State. Met all these guys are still some of my best friends, just like you at Finley, right? You have people who are lifelong friends, right? Yes, sir. And I think that that's a big part of it. And I think we're unfair. I think we're very unfair. But now after last year, you're like, wow, we finally got an All-American stuff, so it's okay now. It's okay. We oh, so, all- yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's fun for us to talk about right now. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. But, but no, you're, uh, you're, you're 100% correct in that. I mean, that is not the end-all, be-all, man. And, you know, I mean, if it, was, if it was easy to do, I mean, geez, everybody could, you know, say that was the thing. But uh, you, you certainly – better be hanging your head on more you know uh, of the, the process and the you know obviously the the things you're learning how to do correctly in your life versus whether or not you've got that all-american plaque you know but that is uh i mean again what what a what an honor and just a uh, a tangible i guess you know token of, of the result of all that hard work and dedication you know so so super happy for brit and uh you mentioned the co-co coach of the year, the co-coach of the year two years ago, this plaque that Brick got, this Elite 90 award that, that Mason got. Yes, those are cool things. And it's, and it's, you know, it's his award. It's Mason's award. It's my award. But in reality, man, that, those are team awards. You know, those are team awards. I, I couldn't be doing any of this stuff without my staff. Those guys are incredibly dedicated. I mean, unbelievably dedicated. They work their tails off. Mason, you know, I mean, he's got – teammates helping him out picking him up supportive family tutors you know uh brit's got coaches drilling with him every day you know again supportive family um supportive teammates all that kind of stuff so you know in reality if you stop and think about it man it's it's the old cliche stuff about taking a village to get those things done but it really is the truth yeah man there's no doubt about it and like i was just thinking of some alum that i know some niu alum and you know kaylin Null. i was the best man in justin Null's wedding yeah great guy were you there for all were you with kaylin at all oh yeah yep when i got here kaylin and wooten were here both graham guys <laughs> now now <laughs> i still see diesel kaylin mechanic? often I, I still see kaylin we, we attend the same church actually and i see him in town he's a physical therapist around here so i see kaylin all the time um, great people his, man the nulls are great daughter i think is the same age as my son i man, so i see him all the time uh Wooten is a wild man, you know, what was a wild man back in the day, at least in terms of being a competitor. I mean, that dude was about as snot nosed competitor as I've seen. I mean, that dude was mean. So um, he was a lot of fun to coach back in the day, but he, he's a successful guy and super hardworking guy. So that was the era when I just came in. It was, uh, you know, Grimes, Wooten, um, Scott Owen was still here coaching. Um, well, oh my Pat God. Stillo, when you say Pat that Stillo. name, I get tired thinking about Scott Owen. Scott yeah. Owen used to warm up. I he would warm up for like an hour. Like it yeah. was crazy. Like uh I think I watched one of the loft houses warm up, one of the Iowa loft houses, and I was like, is this guy gonna have energy any energy to wrestle? And yeah. that guy was a hammer. Owen was a two time all American for you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was a sixth and a fifth, I want to say. Awesome yeah. guy, too. Really nice guy. He was at Navy and then Bloomsburg was Stutzman. Awesome yeah. guy. Got to meet him and, and talk to him a bunch. And, um, man, he was doing a tough route, too. He was doing a tough route to, to try and coach. And he was, try, he was doing the crazy thing. But great guy. And then 
Who's the other? Oh, Pat McLemore. Pat McLemore. Pat McLemore, man. Patty Mac. Yeah, he was he was a Mac champ back in the day too. You know, he beat Lashaway in the finals. He beat Drew yeah. Lashaway. Larry. Oh, yeah. Larry Shore. <laughs> Great guy. Great yeah, guy. Both great so, guys. Uh, so we had Pat McLemore at the Burnett camps as a little kid. And he was nuts then. He was insane. He won state as a freshman. Pat McLemore yeah. was just like a 13 or 14-year-old state champ as a freshman in high school. And I like Pat McLemore. Good dude from Padaway, from the Parma area. Uh, mm -hmm. Real good dude. Awesome Not guy. Kind of, yeah, awesome and then he was dad. David Carr's high school coach. What's that? He's David – he was David Carr's high school coach. Oh, yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, he was with Carr the whole yeah. time through, man. Yeah, he, he was, was his like, training uh, partner. Yeah, that was Pat, – Pat took the brunt of the David Carr development, no doubt. I mean, he put, uh, <laughs> you know, body, he put serious mileage on his body, uh, you know, in the name of helping Carr out, no doubt. Man, you got some great alum, though. And I, like, bring these names up and I think about these guys. You got some really good alum. You got great mm -hmm. alum and a, and a great program, what you guys have done. And now to see it come back around, like you said, was it 16 years? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, think, I think it was. I want to say seventeen. Uh, you know, between between it was oh four and twenty one. So uh, between between all Americans, you know, um, and and some close ones in between there. But that just goes to show the margin of victory or the margin of you know closeness of how you can be from round of twelve to all American. You know, so I mean, had some really good dudes losing that round of twelve match, some pretty tight matches. You know, I mean. One of one of the main guys. I mean, honestly, Pat Pat Castillo. I mean, that kid that kid could flat out wrestle, and he had a tank. Um, I think he drew Donahoe two years in a row, like first match. So I had to battle all the way back through um, some madness like that. And I want to say had some very high seeds that he ran into that that got upset and ran into like the uh, in his round of twelve match. One year, Mac Ryder. Um, I can't remember who else. But, Are you kidding me? Yeah. So I mean, crazy stuff like that. But Matt Pat was you know the two time outstanding wrestler of the Mac championship. He beat Danny um, Mitchiff. He beat Danny Mitchiff at the, at yeah, the Mac tournament. I think, I think, what, was it Mitchiff one year and Smith one year? Dude, look, he, was, maybe, look, maybe he was Smith. legit. He was really good. Yeah. Pat the Cat, super fast, man. Unbelievable. Unbe like, wow. Hey, is the Lake Highland prep coach, is he, uh, is he a Northern Illinois guy? <sighs> he is. He has some ties. I know he's from up in this area. I don't yeah. think he's an alum, but I know he's a he's from the Northern Illinois region. I've talked to him briefly about that. Yes. Yeah, because we were at uh, you and I were actually at uh, Dvorak. Mm -hmm. I remember we were at Dvorak, and I drove from Ann Arbor that morning. It was it was awesome. It was foggy. I remember out. But how far is Dvorak, which is Rockford, right? Yeah. How far is that from you guys? That's I mean 40, 40 minutes. That's that's super close for us. That's a, that's a must get to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that tournament's hammer. I, Austin Gomez won the tournament that year. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the guys who were in that tournament, Lake Island prep won the tournament at seven champs and Silva was one of them. I mean, they had just an incredible team. So that was like, yeah, when I went to that tournament, I was like, this is a really good tournament. Dvorak's a really good, and, and for it being 40 minutes away, yeah, you got to go to that. No yeah, and I love, I love when some out-of-state teams come, too, because, you know, that's a good good way to get some look. You know, between Ironman, Dvorak, um, and then some state championships, you can get a pretty good handle on what's going on in the Midwest, you know? Oh, how far is Bloomington normal from you guys? Oh, geez. Uh, hour or two? Hour or two? My, yeah, my two, sister probably about two hours. Probably about two hours. Honestly, I don't, I don't never spend that much time down there. Well, they don't have wrestling. Huh? Right. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah, my, my life yes. is, yes, my, my travel is dependent on who's got wrestling and not. Yes, that's, that's so fine. But that's my sister-in-law played basketball there at Illinois State. Okay. So I have to care a little bit. Yes. Got to care a little bit. Uh, she's a Redbird. So my wife, periodically, I will see a Redbird shirt, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Your sister played basketball there. And But, yeah, so it's like Illinois is just a really cool – how far are you guys from Quad Cities? Oh, man, that's – that's pretty – Two, three hours? Two, three hours. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a big state. I don't think people get that. It's a long state. It is. From yeah. the Wisconsin border all the way down to, uh, geez, up it's Kentucky, right? Yeah, Kentucky. I mean, you know, St. Louis, and then, you know, we got all these border Missouri. states right on the side of us. So Iowa. Um, Iowa, yeah. I mean, it's – and, again, you know, that's where the, the geographical kind of – outstretch you know is, is relatively convenient because guys can fly in for not fly in but even you know drive in from iowa wisconsin ohio yeah. michigan missouri so um that's kind of nice you know that's why we kind of have a, a diverse group of um 
guys on the roster from, from particular states around the area, except for outliers in California. You know, those guys, that's a little farther away. How do you get guys from California? How do you get that guy? How do you get the get after him, of the year? Yeah, you get after him. I mean, uh, you know, Coach Moyer was pretty big on uh, instrumental in that one, you know. Um, and then we, we, we were able to get Isaac out, you know, and, man, hit it off. And first of all, he liked the idea of getting out of that heat a little bit, which, which helped. Um, but he, he actually has some ties to the kind of the Chicagoland, um, Northwest Indiana area. So that, that didn't hurt either. He's got some family around that area. So big Chicago sports fan, Isaac Olenek. It's pretty funny. Really? Yeah. It's from Bakersfield, California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's hurting right now with those bears. Oh, my goodness. Did you watch that the other night? I felt Not so as bad, bad as me. I'm a Lions guy. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a Browns guy. Come on. Hey, yeah, you're loving, life. you're loving life right now, though. Yeah, we're pretty – we're not – yeah, we're, we're one loss away from everybody wanting to trade everybody, and we're, we saw it again. Let's, let's be honest. There's hope. Uh, there is, is nice. hope. I agree. I mean, man, <laughs> the Lions. So, I grew up a Lions fan. You did? Yeah, well, yeah. I'm from the, the – the, all, the, all we got was uh, – we got a Fox station out of Toledo. It was like Channel 36, and we were poor hillbillies or whatever. So yeah. my, we didn't have cable or anything. I, I didn't have cable, yeah. Yeah, so we got the antenna. We got all the Detroit. We were in the Detroit market. Toledo's yeah. the Detroit market because the Mud Hens used to go to the – I think they still go to the, to the Tigers. Yep. First, all my first pro games and anything were all Detroit stuff because it was only an hour from my house. And that was like a lot of people in that. It's real weird in Northwest Ohio, where we're at, where I'm from, to the Toledo area, all the way over to like Delta, Wauseon, to that Indiana line. It is, uh, it's 50 50 Michigan fans. That's true. That's yeah, true. No, it's real weird. And, and, uh, like my, one of my best friends growing up was a huge Michigan fan. Uh, it's just like this real weird thing. And then the sports that the pro people are either in Toledo, they're either, they're usually Detroit. So there's some like outliers that are Indians fans or Browns fans, but oh, it's, most it's of probably those people, closer to get to Detroit from there. You know, no, it's way closer. It's way closer. Yeah. It's, it's an hour. It's 45 minutes closer. So yeah. Well, it makes sense. Right. And then automotive industry. And so you got people that commute up to Detroit from Toledo. So not to mention uh, Detroit sports. That was, you know, that was heyday back then, man. Somebody was always good, whether it was the Tigers or the Pistons or the Red Wings, never the Lions, Sanders. but at least you had, Hey, at least you had Barry Sanders to watch. Barry you know? Sanders. Great. Okay. Hold on. It's not up for debate. You can argue with me about it. I'll just mute you. The greatest running back in NFL history. It's not close. All these people No, Jim Brown, Walter Payton, Eric Dickerson, uh, the juice he killed his wife. But, you know, like, I, I, Barry Sanders, you'll never see anybody else run 40 yards and gain two. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. I mean, unreal. If, if, if you don't want to call him the GOAT, you have to admit he was the most electrifying guy He's out unreal. there. unreal. You know? He's a little. I, mean, I, I love sweetness I over here in Chicago. I like him, too. But, I mean, if it comes down, I mean, Barry is just the ultimate, yeah. man. That guy. And class act, too, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the bad boys. Bad boys, man. I love that bad action. Bad boys are awesome. Love that action. But I was a uh, uh, Trammell, Sweet Lou Whitaker, yep. Cecil Fielder fan growing up. And then once I went to Kent State, you know, it's Northeast Ohio, I was like, it, it is. These people are rabid fans over here. And it's like you get immersed in it, right? It's like you go learn a language because you're, you're, you're saturated in a language and it's all that's hitting you, right? Yeah. So you become like this fan by default. But like growing up as a kid, all we had was Lions, Tigers, Pistons, Red Wings too. They had, but the Red Wings were more on cable. I remember it was not. Yeah, like the Wings were the Wings were tough though, man. That was you could they always count on them. Man, but, right? Yeah, nothing else was going right. The Red Wings are going to win. Yeah, that, no, and like you're saying, it was rolling back in the the 80s and the 90s, early 2000s for Detroit, and then. Yeah, I remember when I first got to Finley, man, that was, uh, gosh, was the, uh, we actually got in trouble in the dorm one night because we were cheering for the, the Indians. I think my buddies, I was sitting in their dorm room and they were going bananas for the Indians. So I can't remember if it was the World Series, the playoffs. I can't remember which year that Probably was. World 95. Yeah, 95 and, uh, World Series. Yeah, so that was, I mean, that was a good time. Like you said, I just got, got thrown into that culture where everybody's, you know, loving the Indians. So I was like, yeah, I'll hop on this train, I guess. Why not? Were you like a crazy Go Blue fan growing up or were you a Sparty? No, nah, man. Um, I, I was honestly, I wasn't really either. I, I was, I liked Notre Dame football growing up. That was like with Rocket Reggie Bishmel. And, you know, that was, that was back when they were rocking. I had, I don't know why I had to be a little, 
a little contrarian, you know. Tim Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rocket Ishmael. Yeah, I love oh, I love Rocket man. That was that dude was had wheels. Lou Holtz. Yeah, I love Lou Holtz too. That was good stuff. He's had the hat, man. had the starter coat. Yeah, he's a Golden Flash. Is he really? Yeah, him and Nick Saban both were Golden Flashes. <laughs> Quite the tree. Did you know that? No, I don't, I don't yeah, think Saban, I was aware of that. Saban played D back at Kent State. Wow. Yeah, I mean, their football teams. You guys got a really – your football team, like, I know you, you struggled against the Wolverines. I get that. But you're in and yeah. you're out. And I use pretty good at football. And you're a tough out. You know, people don't want to necessarily play you guys. NIU football has been unreal. And as far as a front porch to the athletics programs as well, I mean, geez, these guys were in the – the Orange Bowl in what, 13? Or so, I can't remember the exact date, but I mean, that, that's unreal. They basically like started changing rules because these guys were getting in these games, you know? So, I mean, um, unbelievable tradition with NIU football. And this guy, they got Thomas Hammock, who's an alum, is doing a fantastic job recruiting. I mean, our quarterback now is that transfer from MSU, Rocky Lombardi, who was a stud wrestler in high school out of Iowa. So, um, you know, he, he, he believes strongly in, in wrestling guys. I mean, he's got a few... I got, he's got the, the guy who took runner up to Cassiopeia senior year on the team, Jeffrey Griffin. Um, I think a couple state champs from Wisconsin, Nebraska. So he, he gets it. He knows the value of wrestling to becoming an overall athlete as well. So um, he's a fan of our program and we're a big fan of his as well. How many years does he, does Lombardi have left? I think he's got another year after this. I think he's got this one or another one. Do you think you can get I, him to don't strap hold me up? to that, but I believe that's the case. What's that? Could you get him to strap up? Could you get him to put the straps uh, up? Man, you don't don't think I don't hit him up, you know? I mean hit him up. I talk to those guys, I joke around with them. We'll see, you know. But I mean, if I was hammock, I wouldn't let him in that room. I'd be <laughs> <laughs> me either. So oh man, that's crazy. Okay. So Coach Moyer is from Nebraska, right? Is he from yes. Nebraska too? He's from Iowa. He's from Iowa? Oscaloosa, Iowa, yes. Okay. And he's been with you ever since you've been the head coach, right? Yeah, he's been – well, he, I think he came in like a year after that. Okay. So he's been here for, geez, yeah, I mean, 13, 14 years, something to that effect. So, wait, you didn't – No, no. Dave, did great, Dave Grant hire him? or did Dave you? brought him in. He was a volunteer at Iowa and then hired him on as a second assistant uh, full-time. So, God, he's been here, man, yeah, like a year – geez, a year less than a year or two because it was Papa Dotto, so I was here with at first. He was, he, it was me and Papa Dados got hired at the same time under Grant. And then I think a year, how was it, a year later? Jeff, was more, Jeff Breeze was with later? you guys. Jeff What's Breeze that? was with you guys for a minute, too. Who's that? Jeff Breeze. Jeff Breeze was with us for a minute, yep. yeah. Uh, Mike Castillo was with us for a minute. He wrestled at U of I. He was Pat's brother. Um, and other than that, man, it's been, Moyer's been, you know, a staple and a pillar in the program. And then uh, Ty Prasma we had for a couple of years. And then um, this, you know, Springer guy, he's, he's a fantastic addition. He's a little silent assassin. Um, so he's, he, he's a freaking, he's our brand of guy. He's awesome. We love Kyle Springer. When you get a guy like Moyer, right? Cause it's hard to get assistance who you really jive with. Mm -hmm. When you get a guy like that, is it hard to hang on to a guy like that? Yeah, it's always hard to hang on to guys in those positions, man. I know he's got goals, you know, I mean, who doesn't, you know, aspire. If you're in the game this long, you aspire to be the head man. And, um, you know, those are things that we support him on and all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I guarantee, you know, that'll, that'll work out one day. But, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's hard to hold on to him. But on the other, on the other hand, you know, he's got so much blood in the bricks here and he's got so much invested. I know he likes, you know, coaching here and, and the relationships he's formed. So it's got to be something that's, you know, that's life changing for, for that to, you know, change for him. I know we, he, you know, with all this work that, you know, he's put in on a personal level, it's fun to, it's just as rewarding and fun to see him having it all pop off as well. Okay. We brought you on the Barbarian and I, Hour for a reason, not just to meander through conversation like I like to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that. If you haven't, haven't noticed, I know you probably have, but I'm a big long form guy, but we brought you in to preview the Huskies this year. I think the Northern Illinois Huskies can, can win a MAC championship. We're going to have a new MAC champ this year. Missouri's out. They're back in the Big 12. They have won every MAC championship since 13, I believe. Mm -hmm. 13 to 21. They won every, every team title. And I think they won all the dual titles too. So someone's going to win it. The early on odds favorite. And if I ask Joel Greenlee, we had, we, we had some circumstances that changed. Central Michigan 
it's hard to bet against the chips, right? They won it all the years leading up to besides, Oh, you beat them once. I think you guys might've beat them once in the duels. I know that, but it's hard to bet against central, right? Coach Pirelli does an excellent job in Mount Pleasant, but we're going to have a new champ this year and they don't have returning all American Drew Hildebrand. Right. That's big. That really changes the landscape for me in the mid American conference. Is there any doubt in your mind that you can't bring a team championship tournament championship Mac team title back to DeKalb, Illinois? I think, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you're not of the mindset that, that you can do that, um, that then you're, you know, you, 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 I don't know. I mean, I think then that's, that's wrong. So can we, yes. Do it. Does do things have to go incredibly well and right? Yes. Um, and there's a ton that goes into that, you know, I mean, obviously look, you know, I, if you ask favorites, I mean, come on, you know, it's hard to list one. You've got, I mean, CMU, Ryder, uh, Cleveland State's been on the come up. Ohio, you know, has got some guys back and healthy. I mean, and, you know, I mean, if I don't mention anybody and leave them out, that's when they creep in. You know, all these EWL teams that have merged in have guys. I mean, look at Lockhaven. They didn't even get to compete last year. They had to hop it in the MAC tournament. That was a crazy injustice. So I know they've got studs over there. I'm super um, mad about that. I, <laughs> yeah, I mean, me so mad. you know, so, so everything's different, man. Everything's different, you know. Um, Guys are changing weight classes based on, you know, having a, a year that's longer now, um, you know. So guys are kind of finding their way back into some different old school weight classes, um, old school lineups and ways to do things. So I don't know who the favorite is, but I know it's going to be one scrappy MAC championship and it's going to be extremely interesting. So, um, you know, for us, previewing the lineup, you know, if you want to go up and down the, the weight classes here, we can, we can do that. I think so it, let's, let's start with 25. And yeah. And we already know it's going to be a good old hoedown down in the down in the hills, down in the Hocking Hills for the in the combo. It's going to be down in. It has <laughs> to be. It has Ohio. to be. We got to leave like three days early. <laughs> You're really going to earn that one if you guys get it this year, man. Holy smokes! It yeah. is going to be a hoedown, and they get it done down there, man, in Athens, Ohio, and that's where the tournament's going to be. And I like that. I like that. That arena is like, I like that arena. I'm sorry. It's going to be fun, man. It's like, uh, you know, it's like old school Roman Coliseum. That yep. floor is small. Yep. The seats, you know, it's like cavernous. It just yes. goes straight up like a column. You got it. Man. So it's, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun, no doubt. Um, You're going to work like a dog to win that. Yes, Start sir. Start us out at 125. Who do you guys, who, who, if you can give me multiple guys, whatever you feel comfortable with, but who do you see? Northern Illinois sending out at 125 pounds. Yeah, I mean, you're going to laugh at this, but I got uh, West, West, and West. Um, Bryce West, Drew West, and Blake West. Is this real? This is real. So <laughs> Every guy is West. <laughs> All studs. Uh, Bryce and Drew are twins, and Blake is a, is a highly touted recruit out of Shakopee, Minnesota. Now, odds are he'll redshirt, uh, but uh, then 25 will be battled, you know, by Bryce and Drew West. So, Drew is working his way back in from a, an arm injury he sustained a couple of years ago, but uh, making incredible gains on getting healthy. And Bryce is coming back down from 133 where he manned that spot for us last year and actually was a qualifier at that weight. Okay. So I'd say he's the early on favorite. You got a qualifier dropping down from 33. Dropping down from 33 to 25. To, to 25. Yeah. So I'm saying he was a qualifier at 33 and he's dropping down to 25. Yeah. And two years, two years prior to his qualification at, 33 he qualified at 25 so he qualified his his true or his redshirt freshman year then he fell short his sophomore campaign and then last year he qualified at 33 dude he's gonna be a monster he's a, he's a tough character he is he's a tough tough wrestler a smart wrestler um gnarly little dude loves to loves to drill loves to work out so we're excited about him 33 33, um, geez, some hardworking guys in here. You know, I think that weight class is going to be the three guys in there right now that I can at least mention are this Nathaniel Genobana. He's a four-time um, placer out in Iowa. Super tough little freshman coming in. But the front runners for that, it's going to be fought out by Lucian Brink from Coshocton, who was our 25-pounder last year as a true freshman. Um, Lucian loves to lift, loves to work out. He, he's He's all of a 33 pounder right now. And then um, Mikey Kaminsky from Lockport, Illinois, up here, Lockport High School. He, he spot started for us in a couple of extra matches last year and um, did pretty well, did pretty well. You know, he had some kind of mixed results, some ups, some downs, but uh, 
both incredibly hardworking kids. So I'll be very interested and very happy with whoever comes out on top of that wrestle off. Lucian state champ in Ohio, isn't he? Yeah. He's from yeah. Shocktown, isn't he? D, D, D3 state champ, little town. Yeah. Um, that's where, uh, uh, hey, that's again, where Jim man. Humphrey's from. Jim Humphrey's from Coshocton. Is he really? Yeah. And then I had a college teammate named Brian Boffman who's from Coshocton. I believe he's the principal of the high school now. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Shock Lucian town, is, uh, dude. He loves it, man. He, he, this guy loves to wrestle. He just, he's all about it. So, um, lo love those two guys at that weight class battling out Kaminsky and Brink. 41. 41, probably. I mean, you know, we've got Chase. I mean, kind of like a couple of these guys mentioned with some of the really deep weights. I mean, I've got half a dozen plus guys at 41 battling it out. Um, but I think right now, um, early, early on favor is probably Caleb Brooks returning, you know? Um, so he's been steadily getting better for us. Finally kind of growing into a full size 41 pounder. Um, he's long, he's lanky, he's fast, he's technical. Um, so we like him. And then Javon Jones is, is going to drop down from 49 to 41 and challenge there as well. So that'll be interesting. But either way, we feel like we've got some pretty good veteran blood ready to rock. Jones is an Ohio guy. Yes, sir. Yeah. You so know I always got to point that Brooks. out, right? Yeah. Brooks is like a, uh, what was it called? Is it, uh, he's right outside Columbus. Circleville, Centerville. Brooks is from Columbus area? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. But Jones is from, I think Jones he ended up is, in Shaker, uh, Shaker Heights. Yeah, yeah. He was at Bedford. I think he was at Bedford, too. He went to a, di a couple different high schools. Uh-huh. Um, but you guys got him. That guy's a stud. Yeah, jo Jamon can wrestle, man. Yeah, actually, uh, Walter's dad coached him his senior year. Was it yeah, Norway? Yeah, so Nordonia his senior year. Nordonia, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, so Nordonia. Okay. Man, Nordonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was a Kobala guy. guy. Hey, Jimmy Anderson is a state champ for Nordonia. Boom. Did you Shout know that? To Jimmy. Did you know that? I did not. Yeah, him and his brother, Joe. And then... Uh, a guy who you might have known from Finley, Perrine. Yeah. Paul Perrine, his boys are both state champs at uh, at uh, Nordonia. Yep, yep. Super tough kids too, man. They're, they're, they got bright futures. I know uh, one collars, of them is kind of wrapping up his career, and then uh, Sal's just starting it. Yes. Okay. So, 49. 49, we, uh, you know, we've got returning national qualifier Anthony Cialoni there. Um so he was one and two at the national tournament last year, uh, took third at the MAC championship and ended up beating, beating the Rutgers kid, Van Brill, who I thought it was white hot heading into the mat or the national tournament. And uh, we were able to secure a victory over him and lost a couple real tight ones to uh, Lamer and the app state kid Milner out at the show. So um, Anthony's ready. You know, he, he had a kind of a, he was thrown into the fire last year. Um, Kind of on short notice, he was recovering from a knee injury. And on short notice, Javon wasn't able to make a match. So I was like, Anthony, you got to get in here. You know, boom, he's 11 over. You're not happy about it. But I was like, this is, hey, this is, this is your opportunity. So we grabbed him, got him in the bus. And, he, you know, he floated three on the trip down to Missouri. So immediately was feeling better about things. <laughs> and uh, got to work, cut the weight, had a good weekend. Um, won over OU and had a decent match, pretty competitive match with uh, – the 49 pounder down there from Missouri, Mahler. And, um, you know, he, he never looked back. He became a starter, had some great wins, qualified for the national tournament, went, went, went one and two. So he's back and uh, ready, ready for some more action. Lamer, I was at, I was at a camp with him this summer. Mm -hmm. Lamer's six foot two and he's a 149. Yeah, man. I mean, those he's he has some long, long cats. Huge, long guys. huge yeah. guy. Your guy lost to Lamer and Milner. Yeah, I mean, I think they're probably oh. those guys are probably you know twelve foot plus if you put them on top they're of each other. They're huge. Those guys yeah. are both massive guys. Yeah, your guy's got your guy. He's got a good base. I like that. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, uh, so 57. 57. 57. You know, our, our returning starter is uh, Anthony Gibson, and he's had some really good wins for us in the past a couple of years ago. At Forty. He was at forty one, and he was he was sucking some serious weight there, but uh, did post a major decision over Dre Simon from central Michigan to help us secure that, that dual meet victory. And then bumped up two weight classes that I had enough of that and went 57 last year was probably a bit undersized, still scored a good victory over the Buffalo kid, that petite, who's a tough, tough character and was a national qualifier, but couldn't put it together at the Mac tournament, um, spent the summer in the gym again. And, and we think he's poised for a good year this year. And he'll be challenged by Alec Rees, who is healthy. He's a former state champion out of Michigan. All right, we're about to hit the time. I, hopefully, you can finish your preview here. The timer's yeah. about to go. I have five, ten more minutes. We're good. Okay, you're you're good. 
Yeah. Okay. All right. So moving on to 65 for the Huskies. Yeah, 165, I and mean, we've got guys, but I mean, uh, the clear, clear favorite is Isaac Olenek, you know, um, returning national qualifier, um, holds some great wins. Um, we're, we're really excited about his development, how he's come along, and one of the most competitive young people I've ever seen in, in my coaching career, just wants to win everything. Um, super nice guy, but man, he, he does not want to lose. So um, student of the sport, works his tail off, um, lost an incredibly tight overtime match to Valencia early in the tournament last year and then took a, a loss on the backside to Whitlake. Um, so other than those that, man, two we're, losses? we're hoping he has a, yeah, those were his losses. Um, and again, you know, one point loss to, uh, or no, X was like a, sorry, he lost on a takedown in the last 10 seconds or five seconds to Valencia and um, in overtime or else we were going to shake that bracket up. And then, uh, you know, so again, he's got, this is, he's got three more years left and we're, we're couldn't be more excited about a Lennox future so he, he's the guy there 74 74 mason kaufman elite 90 award winner national qualifier does things right team captain um so you know again smart enough guy to continue to work trusting his offense getting better on top and uh you know want to see more out of him this year i know he does too 84 84 is uh returning mac champion Britt wilson so um looking to capitalize on his sixth place finish at the national championship now you know a year older doesn't mean a year better but for Britt, he keeps working his butt off he's never satisfied um we all have we all understand how difficult how challenging and how nasty this national tournament is going to be this year with all these eligibility waivers so you know again um he's looking forward to that challenge 97 97 is going to be a, a battle you know we've got a, a freshman nick benton from florida who's had some pretty good wins on the high school scene didn't get to wrestle any matches last year, um, but but he's pretty gifted athlete. Um, guy named Matt Zuber out of Chicagoland area will be challenged for the spot. And then um, got a lighter guy named Tristan Guaman who's really put on some weight. He's got a long frame and saw an opening for a potential starting spot there at 97. So um, that'll be very interesting to see how that goes with their training and their wrestle-offs and, and that first go with the Michigan State Open. 285, who will the Huskies send out? Yeah, 285. So Max Irie was our guy, um, decided to go move on with his life and his career. His body had just had it. So um, totally okay with that. And then coming behind him is a guy that was nationally coming out of high school named Therese Aaron, who's now healthy, training hard. Um, pretty tough, big, fast foot, uh, competitive guy. And uh, actually had a very close match with Stencil couple of years ago at the Michigan State Open, if you want to refer back to that. But uh, Therese, Therese is a very able-bodied, uh, competitive individual who we think command that spot in a very big way. Your team's better than I even thought. After you just ran through it like that, you're, you're even better than I, than I had remembered and what I've read and, and all the things that I, I look at. You're even better. You know, I, like you're saying, it's going to be a scrappy Mac tournament. I'm fired up with it for it. Um, obviously, I'll be there. but. Uh, where do you guys start out? Michigan State? Yep, Michigan State Open, which would be nice because they got those freshman, sophomore brackets. And, man, we've got, I mean, geez, you know, maybe, maybe almost 20, 20 new guys that we can get in those brackets. And then uh, always a great test right out of the gate, you know, to try to get some numbers by your name. There's a lot of, a lot of nationally ranked guys there. And so, so you can start making a name for yourself and carving your way to the NCAA tournament that first weekend. And you guys at Midlands? We are at Midlands as always. We'll never not go there. It's a half hour away. It's a beautiful thing. Um, right after Michigan State, we'll fly out to Ryder. That's going to be a crazy duel out there. Weekend after, we're at Purdue. We're going to wrestle Purdue, Bellarmine, Duke, and Brown. Um, after that, a little break uh, for Thanksgiving. Then we got the Cougar Clash down at SIUE. And then it's, it's exam week. And then we got the Kent State Golden Flashes coming out here on December 18th. Um, then Midlands after Christmas, Central Michigan at home, Ohio at home, Oklahoma at home, fly down to Little Rock and Cal Poly, fly out to Buffalo, wrestle Northwestern at their place, finish up at our place with SIUE and Cal Baptist, and then we're off to the postseason. So Love it. Then you, uh, after that last duel meet, you guys begin your trip. <laughs> you get on the bus hey, and you start heading towards yeah. Athens. Hey, Matt, we're going to get in the showers after that and head out to Athens and, you know, we'll, we'll be there. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, it's, it'll be good, man. It's going to be a good environment out there. We can pack that place. I'm sure if all the Mac, Mac fans show up, it's going to be rowdy in there. It'll be fun. You know what? I, I, I might have misspoke. Because if I got to go to the – if my nephew ends up starting this year for, for App State at 197, 184, or whatever, I might have to go to the – I might have to go to the SoCo, man. You might have to, buddy. Yeah, I might have, have to. Have, uh, you know, you'll have to have the devices running while you're watching live, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just how it is. You know that. Coach, you have earned it, man. You were the coach of the year two years ago in the MAC. You got a, a contract extension. You got your first All-American in 11 years. And Britt Wilson, you had the Elite 90 award winner. And with Mr. Kaufman, the, the Eastern Michigan transfer, you're doing it, man. You guys are doing an awesome job. Is there anything else that uh, I have not addressed? I mean, I just, I mean, what I just said there, like you're saying, the awards are great, right? The awards are great. You love the awards, but they're everybody's awards. Correct. Everybody helped you earn that, right? That's correct. There's no doubt about it, man. It's just about surrounding yourself with the right people. And typically good things happen. You know, you, you show up to work every day, you put it in. And they're doing the same, you know, um, good things are going to happen eventually. And, and you, you just keep showing up and believing. And, and that's what we're doing here, man. And every guy in that room is bought in and working their butt off. And we're, we love the group we have right now. So looking forward to a good season. Are we sticking with hashtag work like a dog? We'll see. We'll see. I mean, it's, I like you know, it's like out there. I see some, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of interesting things. I like the creative process of coming up with new stuff, but it's out there. People seem to know it. So, you know, that was the, that was the, the goal in the beginning. So, you know, why not continue to work like a dog? Yeah, man. I mean, it does. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. everything, right? You got to put that work yeah. in something, right? All right. <laughs> Coach Ludwig, thank you for the time. You don't have anything else for me. We're good to go. Go check out barbarianapparel.com. Our partner, Josh Sasfi and Barbarian here on the Barbarian Hour. Coach Ryan Ludwig, thank you for the time. Stick around. I love what you're doing, buddy. Keep blowing up the Mac. 